This is Stan J. Catterbone, Advanced Media Group, www.amgglobalentertainmentgroup.com. It's now 2.16 a.m. Friday, March 11, 2016. Today we ended a 30-year legal odyssey by submitting the smoking gun to the Attorney General of Pennsylvania, Ms. Kathleen Kane. I've been submitting documents to her since November uh, 12, 2015. On November 12, 2015, I submitted a letter to Miss Kathleen Kane regarding the good old boys. In the Langston New Era prior to that, there was a, an article that Kathleen Kane had been suggesting and alleging that the good old boys were responsible for her ter legal turmoil in both civil and criminal courts. I wrote a letter uh, telling her of my encounter with a fella who had declared himself an agent for the NSA. It was in 1998, I was at a job fair in York, Pennsylvania. There was a car dealership that went out of business and it was used for expos and things like that. There was a job fair there and I went up to it and after I was done out of the job fair I was approaching my car and a gentleman approached me in a suit. And at that time I was complaining about people harassing me and the like, the things that were going on since 1987. And he said, well, Stan, let me tell you something. He goes, it's not us, because I was asking him to lay off. He said, it's the good old boys. We had a friendly conversation. We parted ways. So when I saw the article in Langston newspapers about Kathleen Kane telling people that, in open public and in documents, that the good old boys were trying to basically take over the attorney general's office from her, um, I thought, well... I better get involved and send her a letter and advise her of my experience and my encounter uh, with the NSA telling me the same thing, that it was the good old boys that were uh, most likely causing me all the legal problems in civil and criminal courts. The next day I received a letter from the Attorney General's office saying that they would keep that letter on file. Now that was November 13, 2015. Ever since then, Roughly once every one or two weeks, I would submit documentation to the Attorney General's office. There were a couple ways I was doing that. Uh, I was doing it by priority mail. Most oftentimes, I would drop um, priority mail envelopes in Strawberry Square. And now, Strawberry Square at the Attorney General's office, which is on the 16th floor, and the bottom floor... The, uh, there's a drop box there that says Attorney General and there's a slot. So I drop them in the slot. Now when I submitted the letter to Kathleen Kane, an agent, Agent Tyson came down and uh, took it personally from him. And about three weeks ago on the news, I saw a broadcast about uh, Kathleen Kane and Tyson was at, Agent Tyson was actually beside her. So I know that was for real. Anyway, today I submitted the final documentation to the Attorney General's office. I went up there at about, I guess it was about noon. Now, at first when I walked up to the window, there's always a Capitol Policeman there. The receptionist there started writing me a visitor slip to take me up to the 16th floor. Now, I used to go up to the 16th floor years ago, but since in 2015, I was never allowed to put on the 15th floor. Anyway, then she called up to the office, and for the past month or so, I've been communicating with a person named Ellen in the Attorney General's office. I'd call up there once in a while. She called up and said, well, she said, they'll be down, but it'll take a while. She said, you're supposed to leave it with me, the receptionist. Well, I didn't like that idea, so I walked out, and I went to the post office, Caddy Corner, to Strawberry Square, to the Attorney General's office, and Senate priority mail. Anyway, it's a smoking gun, and I'm going to read to you. It's a, I sent about 
270 pages. But I'm going to read an email that is the actual smoking gun. Regarding request for a formal investigation into the Lancaster County District Attorney Office from Stan Catterbone, email address amgroup at msn.com, sent Monday 6-16-2008, 6.52 a.m. to Patricia Hartman, USAPAE, Patricia.Hartman at USDOG.gov. Now, Patricia Hartman is a member, is uh, an agent for the U.S. Attorney's Office in Philadelphia. I was communicating to her, I'd say, for about a half a year or maybe longer uh, on different matters. June 16, 2008, to Patricia Hartman, USDOJ, regarding complaint and Attorney General Gray in 1991. The following may be of interest to your office. I have filed complaints to the FBI for obstruction of justice just last Friday on October 24th, May of 2006, and on and on. December 30th, 1991, 9.50 a.m. Stan Catterbone travels to the U.S. Courthouse in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and personally delivers the chronology and a copy of the, quote, 1987, unquote, Pennsylvania Securities Commission meeting to Chief Judge Bechtel who is presiding over the ISC court proceeding. 10 a.m. Stan Catterbone visits the U.S. Attorney General's office in the same building and files a formal complaint. Quote, criminal conspiracy to, quote, cover up, unquote, the international signal control scandal. The proper form is filed with the clerk. Assist Assistant U.S. Attorney General Gray asked Stan Catterbone to briefly describe his complaint. Stan Catterbone gives Gray the chronology along with the tapes. Stan Catterbone briefly describes the meeting of June 23, 1987 with Larry Resch. The May 23, 19... Okay, I don't know what that says. 1991 phone call from... Oh, in addition, the 1991 phone call from Jay Curtis, the arrest by Manham Township, and the attempts on his life. Agent Gray took notes and said he is not familiar with the case but would personally see that the information is passed to the proper authorities involved in the case. During the conversation, Mr. Gray asked the exact same question that was asked by both Joe Rhoda and Investigator Easter of the Pennsylvania Securities Commission. But you do not work for them, did you? You were not involved with them, were you? Stan Catamon gave his response to all questions by Mr. Gray. It's all in there, the chronology. All the information and events. Now, I'm going to quote some law regarding the Federal Tort Claims Act. Federal Tort Claims Act. The Federal Tort Claims Act provides a limited waiver of the federal government's sovereign immunity when its employees are negligent within the scope of their employment. Under the Federal Tort Claims Act, the government can only be sued under circumstances where the United States, if a private person, would be liable to the claimant in accordance with the law of the place where the act or omission occurred, 28 U.S.C. 1346b. Thus, the Federal Torts Claim Act does not apply to conduct that is uniquely governmental, that is, incapable of performance by a private individual. The government is liable if a law enforcement officer commits assault, battery, false imprisonment, false arrest, abusive process, not acting on complaints, or malicious prosecution. The government is not liable if the claim against the law enforcement officer is for libel, slander, misrepresentation, deceit, or interference with contract. Congress has not waived the government's sovereign immunity against all law enforcement acts or omissions. Now, false arrests, abusive process, false imprisonment. Two nights ago, I was held captive under handcuffs by eight NSA policemen for approximately an hour, if not longer, at Fort Meade. That's false arrest. Abusive process is when my complaints are ignored. That's been going on for 30 years. So this is what I sent to Kathleen Caden today, Priority Mail. In fact, I'll read you the USPS label. Two... 
2301-3460-001-0001-7825-8592. She'll receive it tomorrow morning. In addition, President Obama will receive my formal request for commutation of Michelle Lambert and Tabitha Buck's sentencing. It's now 2.25 a.m., Friday, March 11th, 2016. This is Stan J. Catterbone, Advanced Media Group, www.amgglobalentertainmentgroup.com.